deal with bypass and what it means. Seventy two, uh, possibly seventy two cardinals mm -hmm. in the next three years. I well, mean, for me, it's a great opportunity because with boxing, with things happening, as you know, HBO backed out now. Um, we're still looking for ways to continue to promote boxing. And you got the zones coming in, but this situation, because of how good and how much recognition the UFC has drawn, I've been looking for somebody like Dana, who is innovative and creative enough to be able to give me some room to work. And now him giving, doing this, giving us these 72 dates, gives us room to work, gives us opportunity to start reaching out and helping the little guys get an opportunity to shine. So I am so delightful and delighted that we got the opportunity to join forces with them. A lot of times it seems like boxing fans and MMA fans are kind of at each other's throats about them. Like they're competing constantly, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Do you think this is perhaps the start of like, I don't know, a better relationship between the sports? Yeah, I think this is definitely a better start, but the, prob the problem most people are, are, if you're an athlete, and honestly, if you're a really honest athlete, you have respect for anybody who goes in that ring or that cage and puts their life on the line. As you see from Adonis Stevens a couple weeks ago, he just came out of a coma, thank God, a couple days ago. But when you go in a boxing match or a UFC fight, MMA fight, anything can happen. So for me, anybody who bashes the other sport is really being disrespectful because these guys in both sports, I don't care what, which one it is, they put their lives on the line at the expense of their families and for the viewing audiences. So for me, it's a perfect marriage because I can't see why a person could like one style of fighting and not like the other. One may be a little bit different, but they still, when you boil it down to the bottom of the line, I'd rather my kid be out there fighting another man, man to man, than to be somewhere in a gang shooting or somebody drive by and shoot him. So because if he loses the fight, he can get up like a man, go get himself back together, come back and win or revenge that fight. But if he get caught in the shooting, it's over with for him. So I'd much rather my kid be fighting than to be game banging or something like that. Are you really, uh, recruiting some new talent to be on your fight? Oh, like most definitely. Time. Most definitely. My thing is to recruit as much talent as possible. And I want to start raising and seeing and developing the next, next champ, the future champions of tomorrow. And what else it gives me an opportunity to do is we're also trying to enlarge in the female boxing hemisphere, hemisphere. So I definitely want to bring more female boxing. And a lot of the female boxers are CrossFit girls who also do MMA, do other things. So having that part of it, now we can have more of the hybrid shows where we have sometimes the boxer goes MMA and fights the MMA girl, MMA style, or like like Anderson wants to do, the MMA guy come in and say you want to whoop the chap. So there's a lot of possibilities, a lot of opportunities that he has created in just even making this marriage. I have no prediction on Pacquiao and Broner. What I am here for tonight, I don't really know how that's going to go. But right now, I'm so excited because I want to see Nunez and Cyborg. Uh -huh. And bigger, I want to see John Jones and Goof, uh, whatever his name is. Are you merging to MMA Two. now? Huh? Are you merging to MMA? No, but I always was a fan because, like I just told you, anybody who fights, you got my heart because I know what it takes to go in there and fight. Yes, sir. So, why did you pick Fight Pass over the zone? My reason for picking this one is because of a relationship that I had a long time ago with Dana White. Me and Dana became friends back when I was somebody and he was not yet known to the world. And the friendship that we developed, even back then, him knowing how I am as a person gave him extra respect and love for me because I showed him love when I didn't have to, when I wasn't, but it wasn't like I was that type of person. So I think he understood me and I think he loved my character and so I figured if I get the opportunity outside of HBO to work with somebody, if Dana's available, that's going to be my first option because that's a friend and it's a long time developed relationship. He ain't forget me, it's like I didn't forget him. So in our story, for me, it's like they tell people never forget where you come from and always be careful how you treat people because you don't know who this person is going to be tomorrow. And look who Dana White is today. And this relationship is because how I treated him yesterday when I was up there and he was down there. You feel me? That's why we still, we always were right here. Even when I was there, I treated him as though we were right here. And so right now today, we still right here. Hey, excuse me. Do I want to box Anderson? Uh, I'm retired. Chris Cyborg was president in boxing. How do you feel about that? 
do you think she would do as a boxer? I think she'd do really well as a boxer. Um, <coughs> the only thing is that she'd have to have a fight or two just to get herself used to that atmosphere. And then I think she'd do really well. That's why, like he said, that's why I always didn't mind trying to fight Anderson when he said he, want, when he, said he wanted to do it because I knew he had previous boxing experience. So if a person has boxing experience, then they got, an, they got the opportunity to fight because they know what they're dealing with. If you don't have boxing experience, it's a little different. So you mentioned your fans in the May. Who are some of your favorite fighters? Well, you know, Anderson was my favorite. John Jones was my favorite. Um, I worked with my man, um, Rashid, Rashid Evans. Um, I worked with my other man, uh, Avering, Overing. Um, it's so many guys I love. I love Cyborg, Holly Holm, one of my favorite. Uh, I love a lot of guys. You know, I, 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 Uriah Faber was one of my favorites. So I love all the guys that fight. You feel me? I, I, anybody that fights and who's good at it, I love them. I mean, just, just because I have nothing but the utmost respect for fighters. So when you see me at fights or with guys or taking pictures with guys, it's like I don't discriminate because I got the same love for fighters as I have for myself because I know what they go through and I know what they're willing to do to prove that they're the best in front of people. Don't get no braver than that. Your first main event is after the Mate main event. Is that sort of the level of fights that you were looking at? Huh? Uh, the, the first fight or first main event, mm -hmm. which was after the Mate, mm -hmm. uh, former Tyler Challenger. Mm -hmm. um, is that sort of the level of main events you're looking at? Yeah, um, that's sort of the level, and it's going to hopefully even get better because my job is now that we have the situation is to create competition even for the other networks. You know, I want to create a female fighter to go fight the Zones female fighter, Katie Taylor. I want to create my own heavyweight to go challenge for the heavyweight title. Our heavyweight from UFC Fight Pass, Roy Jones Jr. Promotions. We want to create a heavyweight that can fight for the, fight for the, can join that big mix. How would that work with Fight Pass for, like, for the Zone? Would it fight, be on Fight Pass for the promotion? Or well, you know, at, deals for the fight? as boxing promoters, we have to make deals for the fights. You know, you saw HBO and Showtime do it, so we all can do it. But our goal is to become a name, become a, another player, a major player in the sport of boxing, just like they already run the UFC. So if we can become a major player in boxing, it just gives us more credibility. Are we seeing you totally retire from commentating and more as a promoter now? Is that sort of the tendency? No, no, I still may do a little commentary, you know, you never know. I may do a little commentary. I mean, once we get this thing rolling right, if we get good enough fights and start getting big enough fights, I may even be commentating here. Who knows? So my goal is to build us up a fighting stable, to make people understand and get people more familiar with boxing like they used to be. And then whatever happens, happens. Because it's only better for the sport. What we want to see is just like, this is the good thing about the UFC. The UFC has one body. So you can see the big fighter fight the big fighter. You can see the top name fight the top name. In boxing, the top name, one can go hide on this promoter, one can go hide on that promoter, one can go hide on that promoter, and they all three can talk about how good they are because they never have to fight each other. That's not what I stand for. So when we create a guy, we don't care who's supposed to be the best, we want you. And if your network don't want to do it, come over here to us. We'll do it. Yes, man, I just can't wait to see it's one of the greatest light heavyweight title fights in the history of UFC back at 165. I mean, <laughs> we just don't know what's going to happen because nobody but him seems to be able to give John John Jones a challenge. This is the only guy who I've seen really makes John Jones have to dig deep. So I can't wait to see this this, this rematch. I can't wait. I don't know. I don't have a clue. What do you think about Alex's uh, boxing skills? Huh? What do you think about Alex Gustafson's boxing skills? I like his skills. Yeah, I like his boxing skills. Yes, most definitely. You play all the time about John Jones. That's painful. You can see all feel. Well. This time won't change his legacy because it's not like he did it again. The sense just residue from the old test. And I understood what the commissioner saying in Las Vegas because he don't want to get a lawsuit from somebody else because he let it go through. So it's difficult, but you have to kind of understand people and understand their argument. Nothing will taint the true legacy of who John Jones is. You know, people always say, you think the, 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 the steroids taint their image? I don't think it really taints their image because if steroids made that much difference, anybody could be that good if they just use steroids. Everybody that do it don't be that good. John Jones was that, even in, in the fights that he passed the test on, he was still that good. So now the fights that he fought, that he may have tested positive on, then you gotta take them away. But that does not destroy or eliminate who John Jones really was. Because 
if steroids made a difference, anybody could go get on steroids and they'd be able to beat John Jones. Not the case. I can guarantee you're going to get 90% of them that fight right now in this weight class and give it to them, and they won't beat him. You understand me? So it's like, I don't think that taints his legacy. I don't like it. And we, nobody wants to see nobody do things that are illegal, but still, he had to be pretty good in order to get the name he got before that even got, before that even showed up. You feel me? So. You mentioned other promoters. Will you be working with other promoters to bring some of their fighters to get better? Yes. I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm the type of guy that I'm doing this because we're doing it for the betterment of boxing. We're not trying to push promoters out. If you wouldn't work the way we want to work. Now, if you're going to take guys and hide them and not let them fight the big fights, then I don't want to deal with you because I don't want to hear about how your guy is so good, but he don't want to fight that guy. No. I want to back to where I was. If you're the best, then you bring me the best. That's what I like about the UFC. If you're the best, they're going to make you fight the other best. That's what it got to be. And in boxing, that's the only way I want to see it. If you're not that good, then don't say it. Because if you say it, I'll take that as you mean it. I'm going to find Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy to me, bizarre, because why are you, why are we waiting so long? Why are we waiting so long? We're we waiting on somebody to get beat, which one of them just almost got beat last last week. Huh? How, how did you feel the Well, I thought Fear won the fight. <laughs> but one of them like got beat last week, so why are we waiting? You feel me? I mean it could have went either way. Fury did get dropped twice. But I really thought Fear won the fight. But it, it all depends on who's looking. But my point is, why are we denying the public the opportunity to see a big fight? Why we have it on tap? Why we sticking these other guys in? You almost got beat by the Cuban. Why we keep taking these risks before we get a public what they want to see? It's crazy. Out of those three, Wilder, Fury, and Joshua, who do you think is the best? Well, it's kind of hard to say because Fury is probably the smartest. Joshua is probably the most athletic. Wilder probably has the best one punch knockout power. So it's hard to say who is the best because. Usually in a situation like that, this guy beats this guy, this guy beats this guy, but this guy beats that guy. So it's hard to say who's the best. Couple more guys. If, if you would rank the top three best boxes right now, who would you say? My top three would be, and I'm not going to put them in order, because it's hard to put them in order, but my top three right now are Vasil Lomachenko, Terrence Crawford, and Canelo Alvarez. If you would choose for the dream match uh, that you can see on Fight Best, what, what would it be? Roy Jones Jr. Anderson Silva. <laughs> <laughs> you make that happen? We try, we try. I mean, you know, we got to see what Dana's talking about, but we try, you know. Would you, would you have uh, straight boxing? Straight you? boxing. I can't do no kicking, I ain't. I can't do no kicking. I can't do no airborne. I can't do all that, but I can box. I'm an old man, but I can fight. Who's the best boxer in MMA? Huh? Who do you think is the best boxer in MMA? You know, it'll be between Anderson and Nick Diaz. Nick and Nate Diaz both are very good strikers. Very good strikers. So, I mean, there's a lot of guys that really can fight, but those two, I've seen them win the majority of their fights boxing. So, they, I, they get more credit in my eyes. Thanks, guys. Thank y'all.